Data deduplication is a great way to save space on your Windows server. What it does is it moves any duplicate files into a single file and then puts pointers to where those files originally were. We need to add a role in order to do this, so we'll open up Server Manager and go through our wizard. And when we get to our server roles, I'm going to expand File and Storage Services until we get to Data Deduplication. There's the option right there. I'll click the Needed Added Features and click Next and continue until it's time to do the install. Once the installation is complete, we'll see a new option in Server Manager that will allow us to set up data deduplication on our volume. The data deduplication process puts any file that's going to have duplicates on the rest of the server in what's called a chunk store. And that chunk store is where you'll find the single files that point to the multiple locations where those files once lived. If anyone makes a change to that original file, then it will be saved as a new file, and then the process starts all over again if someone makes copies of that new file. Data deduplication is great for file servers, especially when people tend to save their files into their user profile folders in the server itself, because that's how you end up getting duplicate files. Everyone saves them in their own home directory. Installation is complete, and I'll click Close. Next, I'm going to go to where it says File and Storage Services and Server Manager. Now I can go to Volumes, and I'll choose my e-volume, right-click, and choose Configure Data Deduplication. And a new wizard pops up, and I'll change from Disabled to General Purpose File Server. If you have a virtual desktop infrastructure, then you could choose that. Or if you're using this as a backup server, you can choose virtualized backup server. I'll choose general purpose because that's what this is. And by default, it's going to deduplicate any files older than three days. If you want it to happen right away without waiting, you can just change that to zero or put in whatever amount of days you'd like. If you have any types of files that you would like to make sure are excluded, you can put those in here. So just for fun, I'll put in the .bat files for batch files. And if you want, you can also exclude specific folders and files by choosing this option. If you'd like, you can choose a deduplication schedule. Now, this might actually be very useful for some people that may have limited amounts of processing power on their computer. By default, it's going to be turned on with full input, which means it's going to use as much of the CPU as needed. But if you would like to, you could enable throughput optimization, or you say on certain days of the week, at certain times, you're going to keep it from doing any deduplication because it might slow things down. You could also create a second schedule as well. And if you want it to happen at the highest amount of CPU, you can uncheck the box that says Enable Background Optimization, and then it will run at a higher priority. I'll go ahead and click OK, and I'll click OK on the original box. And now deduplication has been enabled. If I want, I can right-click, and I can choose to configure it again and make changes if I want. Take a look. You can also see under the deduplication rate, it's showing up here. So we know that it has been enabled. And it's showing 0% right now because there's really no files on it. But if we added a bunch of files, then you would see that percentage go up at that point. Those are the basics of data deduplication on a Windows server.